the mistake in the syntax what you have typed in the program is what i will call it as a grammatical mistakes during the execution of the program if you are coming across with any of the errors so that is what i will call it as a runtime error so this is not the right time to call that method but you have called so at that time invalid operation exception Hello everyone I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on dotnet programming so guys the session is going to be very interesting and very simple so what exactly that we will be understanding in this session so how exactly i am going to manage the errors which i am going to get uh, in the execution of the program suppose if i get the error how do i debug that and uh, what exactly a new terminology that i have here that's going to be the exception so what exactly exception is all about is what we are trying to understand in this session so guys let's check the agenda before i start my content to all of you so guys this is the brief agenda that i have uh, which i'm going to discuss in this session with all of you that's going to be the different types of errors that we have and different exceptions that we have in the c# hash is what i will be discussing and then i will be discussing the syntax how do i handle the exceptions which i am getting is what i will be discussing in the third topic then nested try block so try inside the try what exactly this try sir i will be explaining that too all right and multiple catch using finally statement many more uh, topics are there in the content let me just uh, start with the first one what i have so guys error uh before uh, i discuss the content that i have here that is types of error so basically when i type a program the first and the foremost uh, thing or the favorite thing which i get is error correct so all of us we get error especially this error is going to meet us when we are in the lab exam so that's going to be our favorite during our lab exam right so yes most of my students is yes cool how do i solve this error the process of uh, solving this error is what we call it as a debugging so fine but when it comes to this error so we have two different types of errors that we get okay the first one that i will call it as a compile time error second one that i have is all about the run time error what exactly this compile time error when do i get this type of error and what is this run time error when do i get this run time error let's discuss this in detail before i start discussing the main topic in this chapter so guys when it comes to the compile time error so basically let me give you a very easy thought to understand this compile time error in the sense whenever we have any grammatical mistakes so in the program what we have typed so we will end up in getting compile time error sir what do you mean by grammatical mistake the mistake in the syntax what you have typed in the program is what i will call it as a grammatical mistakes so what kind of uh, errors that you can come across so you will be having a missing semicolon so guys so imagine so we have here so missing okay so what is that we have missing some yes is missing here so what is this yes is missing we all know actual spelling of the yes correct missing right so yes is missing so can i call it as a uh, grammatical mistake yes it is a grammatical mistake so guys such kind of errors is what i will call it as a compile time error say for example semicolon missing in your you know program whatever you have typed and the missing uh, brackets say for example i have to open and close the bracket i've got to mention the closing bracket so that is also considered as a compile time error and also i will be writing you no know, misspellings you no know, spellings are wrong with the keywords whatever i have or the identifiers whatever i have so that also leads to compile time error and also missing double quotes in the string so whenever you are giving a string so obviously you have to enclose it with the double quotes right so one uh, quote is missing so that also will leads for a compile time error use of undeclared variables so many more you would have uh, got many more errors if you guys are genius if you are starting it from the scratch you will come across with a lot of errors okay so all this syntax error is what i will call it as a come on guys compile time error all right so 
Fine, we understood the compile time error. What is the next thing that I have then? So I have runtime error. So what is this runtime error? During the execution of the program, if you are coming across with any of the errors, so that is what I will call it as a runtime error. My dear students, you have to listen to me carefully. So guys, do I have a syntax error in this runtime error? No. I don't have any syntax error. I don't have any grammatical error. I have cleared that, but there is an error in the logic. So you can execute the program if your syntax is correct, but when it comes to the logic, if there is any error in the logic that you have used in your program, so then you will come across with a runtime error is what you need to remember. So what type of errors that I will come across? We have many, but I have listed out three here. Dividing a integer by zero. So is it possible for me? No, there is a logic uh, error again. Accessing an element that is out of bond of array. So guys, I'm trying to access element out of the array. So is it possible for me to access? No. So in the same way, trying to store a value into an array of an incompatible class or type. So again, that leads to runtime error and you're trying to search a file which is not there and you're trying to store a, a data into the array because you know, and you don't have any space. All these things are the runtime error. So where your syntax is correct, but the logic is wrong. So such type of error is what I will call it as a runtime error, which all of you know this, okay? So the next topic that I have here is C ash exception. What are the different exceptions that I have? So before we understand that, we need to understand what exactly exception is all about. Exception is a condition. So I will be getting this when I'm performing or when I get any runtime error. So saying that there is a error in the logic. So that is what I will call it as an exception. So fine. What are the different types of exception that I have? So guys, I have listed some of the exceptions here. But if you ask me, sir, do I have only these many exceptions? No, you have many. So if you want to enrich your library. So with respect to this exception, if you want to become a good programmer, I recommend all of you to go through all the different exceptions that we have in C hash. But if you ask me with respect to your exam point of view, this is more than enough is what I would like to tell you. So fine. The first exception that I have here is divide by zero exception. When do I get this exception? So guys, listen to me carefully. When you have the logic so to attempt was made to divide by zero. So you will get this exception. You are trying to divide any number by zero. Say for example, I have 10 divided by zero. So is it a right logic? So can I divide the number by zero? So there is a logical error. But if you ask me, syntax is correct. So I can, I can write like this, say for example, A is equal to 10 and B is equal to zero and I will perform C is equal to A divided by B. Is there any mistake in the syntax? No, but there is a mistake in the logic. That's what you need to remember. So in that case, I will be getting this exception. In the same way, I have format exception. So what is format exception? The format of an argument is wrong. Say for example, I have a method. So in that method, I will have the arguments. So instead of sending two arguments, I will send three. So at that particular point of time, so you can expect this exception. In the same way, I have index out of range. So guys, remember an array is, array's index is out of range. You are trying to access the element out of range. So at that particular point of time, so you will get this. You have the array only till the index 10, you are trying to access the 12th one. So you will get this exception. And in the same way, invalid cast exception. When do you get this? So guys, an attempt was made to cast to an invalid classes. You're trying to convert. Casting in the sense what? You're converting one form or one type into another type. You are trying to convert to an invalid class type. So at that time you will get this. So what you need to remember. Invalid operation exception. When do I get this invalid operation exception? So guys, the method was called at invalid time. So this is not the right time to call that method, but you have called. So at that time, invalid operation exception you can expect. So in the same way, I have missing member exception. What exactly missing member exception? When do I get this? So an invalid version of DDL was accessed at that particular point of time, I will be getting missing member exception in the same way 
not finite exception. What is not finite exception? So guys, a number is not valid. You're trying to give a number which is not valid. The input, whatever you have entered a number that is not valid at that time. So you will get this exception. So not supported exception. What exactly not supported exception is all about? Observe here, indicates that method is not implemented by a class. So that particular point of time, not supported exception, you will get. In the same way, I have null reference exception. What exactly null reference exception? So, so attempt to use an unsigned reference. So you are trying to use unsigned reference at that particular point of time, null reference exception will come. And guys, out of memory exception. So there is no space, but you're trying to store. So out of memory exception and stack overflow. So guys, there is no space in the stack. So you're trying to insert, you're trying to perform push operation to the stack. So stack overflow exception. So all these things are the conditions which will tell you that there is an error during the runtime. So we have many, a number of exceptions. You just have to know how to use and when to use. That's what you need to remember. So you can expect a question from this topic for six to seven marks or eight marks. So moving forward to the next question that we have or the next topic that we have. Syntax of a exception handling code. What should be the syntax? Before we understand the syntax, it's very important that we need to understand the format, how exactly it is working. So guys, whenever, when it comes to the exceptional handling, you need to remember two things. What is that? The first thing is try block. The second thing is catch block. What is the meaning of try block and catch block? So whenever you're writing any program, that program should be inside the try block. So this try block will execute. So that's what you need to remember. So whatever the statements that we have, so that statements will get executed. If there is any exceptions, that exception will throw by the try block. So fine. So that exception is thrown by try block. So who will handle that? So there is one more block called catch block. So this catch block, what exactly is does this? So whatever the exception object it is throwing. So what is exceptions are? Just now we discussed, right? So this will be thrown by whom? So this will be thrown by the try block. So why it is throwing? Because all your program is inside the try block. So the, if there is any exception, this try block will throw the exception that will be catched by the catch block and that will be handled by the catch block is what you need to remember. So basically you got to know that we have two blocks, try block and the catch block. Let's look at the syntax what we have. So guys, try is a keyword that you have to remember. So fine. You will be using the opening flower bracket and then you will be using the closing flower bracket. So in between, you will have your program, whatever the program that you wanted to code. So instead of writing it simply in the class, so you can use this try block. Inside that try block, you can have your logic, okay? Once the try block is executed, so this will throw if there is any error. So that exception object will be catched by this catch block. So catch is again a keyword that you have to use if you want to define the catch block. All right, so you have to mention the exception. If there is any exception that you are handling, so you have to mention exception object. You have to specify this E is the exception object. Okay, that's what you need to remember. And you, you will be uh, mentioning what is that should happen when we handle the exception. That's what you will be mentioning as a statement in this okay that's what you need to remember so fine this is a simple syntax that we can easily remember all right so this is the syntax to handle the exception moving forward so guys multiple catch statement so when do i have what is multiple catch statement it's very simple to understand whenever i have more than one block of catch so i will be calling that as a multiple catch statement so guys how many try block i have so i have only one so observe i have only one so there is no guarantee that I will be getting only one exception. I can get n number of exceptions. So then one catch block will be able to handle one exception. Suppose if I have more than one exception, what do I do? So for that reason, I will be creating n number of catch blocks. So that I will call it as a multiple catch blocks. That's what you need to remember. If you have more than one catch block, 
then I will call that as a multiple catch block is what you need to remember. So fine. So what is that I have here? I have try block. So all my program will be there in the try. Okay. So fine. So if it is generating any exception, so I will just check with the first one. Is it matching for this? No. Is it matching for this? No. Is it matching for this? Yes. Only then this catch block will be executed. Rest of the catch blocks will be ignored. That's what you need to remember. All right. So fine. Uh, moving forward to the next topic. It's very important. So you, you understood the catch block. Is it catch block? No, it is try block, sir. Yes, all your logic will be there in this block. So fine, you have the catch block, multiple catch block we have. So we understood that. Why do we have this catch block? So to handle the exception. Guys, I have some uh, one more block that is finally. What is this finally? After executing try blocks, Okay, so I have to or I will be executing some certain set of statements which is there in finally for sure. That's what you need to remember. So guys, suppose imagine I have executed all the statements and I have thrown some exception. So that will be handled by this catch block. After executing this catch block, so I'll be executing the finally block. Finally block will be a block which is going to get executed after the execution of try and catch. Even if it skips any of the block, but finally will get executed is what you need to remember. The block will get executed soon after try or catch. So that's what you need to remember. Or even after try and catch, definitely it'll, it's going to get executed. So that's what you need to remember when it comes to the finally block. So that's what you need to observe. So what are the keyword that I have to remember? I just have to use the keyword finally. All right. So then after that, I will be defining the block, whatever I wanted to execute after this. So I will be mentioning here is what you need to remember with respect to the finally. So guys, the next one is nested try block. What is the meaning of nested try block? So guys, I have the try block. It's very simple to understand. So I, how do I define the try block? So I have to use a keyword called try. So fine. After that, open a bracket. So I have written try. Try is the keyword that I should have. So after that, open flower bracket. So inside this try. So guys, if I have one more try block, okay. So I will call this as a nested try block. So for this also, I will have catch. Okay. So I'll close this. I'll close this and I'll have catch for this. I'll I'll close this. So if you have try inside the try, then I will call that as a nested try block. So this is what you need to remember with respect to the nested try block. So guys, with this, I've come to an end for this chapter. So hope you understood very quickly with a lot of uh, content. Thank you very much. See you in the next session.